the volume. Um, I have I have a problem. I was asked by Christine uh, that well, since yesterday my uh, undersecretary has uh, officiated uh, the opening ceremony in using English. So uh, to give the audience a fair chance, so I should use Chinese. But looking at the audience today is in fact quite a difficult question, isn't it? So uh, I can I can uh, I can do a referendum here. Uh, if the audience prefer me to speak in English, raise your hands. If Okay. Uh, Cantonese, Mandarin. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a bit. <laughs> um, may I suggest I go by the majority? That well, but you have the SI there, so uh, I'll, I'll I'll stick to English since uh, Christine has started off by using English. And the second thing I want to do is, can I can I uh, spare the can I spare the uh, the stage because it, uh, so that I can stand closer to you all. Uh, in fact, the, the, it is not the language that matters. I think what put all the audience today here from various sectors, from various professions, from different parts of the world coming to Hong Kong today, I think not, we are not divided by the language we speak, nor the distance that you have traveled. In fact, it's in fact the passion that you have on uh, air quality and carbon that put us all together here. So, after setting the language, I think we will be speaking in a common language, marine emission, and how we can do better with our environment by working together, well, uh, among the sectors that you have represented. Uh, I, must, I must congratulate Christine and also uh, all the people who are involved in organizing this forum. Although well, government do contribute a little bit through the Environment and Conservation Fund, but that's only a small part. Uh, had it not been the passion, uh, the vision, and also the participation from all different sectors, I think uh, we wouldn't have a dedicated section uh, on marine emission in Hong Kong. But in fact, what uh, what amazed me is in fact uh, three three uh, interesting things that I draw from this forum. First is, I think it's one of the very few dedicated uh, forum to talk about marine emission in particular from various aspects. Now, we often have environmental subjects discussed in environmental forum, which draw on people who are passionate about the environment or experts or people who are involved in the environment or in, involved in green industry. But it may have missed the, the, the major stakeholder being people in the trade, people in the industry, people who are uh, taking hold of the industry, like uh, major liners, uh, like uh, companies who are involved in the marine trade. So I think uh, this is a fully dedicated uh, session, which we talk about a subject which is so close to our heart. And secondly, I think uh, uh, what is most um, encouraging is, in fact, this is a regional forum. Uh, I was told by my colleagues and also Christine that yesterday you had a, a very full and uh, enthusiastic participation by people uh, who are not just coming from our own small city of Hong Kong. We have people uh, from the Delta Delta area, which are in fact sharing the same atmosphere and the same sort of a cluster of cities uh, where economy, social life are so closely needed together. And Better still, we have people from, I understand, Indonesia, the US. So I hope this would be, in fact, a good forum for a more sharing on a regional basis. And I think the answer is simple because, well, air pollution sees no boundary. And when we talk about the environment, particularly in cities like Hong Kong and also all the major port cities in our vicinity, we are not just talking about things happening within a small territory of a metropolitan city. However, Big or metropolitan, it, it might be. Navigation and, and maritime industry is one that travel among different continents across oceans. So it is, in fact, not just a city, but also a regional and, in fact, global issue. That how we use the common language, the passion, to bridge over different gaps. So this is rather encouraging. And the third encouraging thing is we have here not just officials academia, 
people from the trade, but also officials from different jurisdictions. Here, uh, I, I remember someone, well, in Hong Kong, a lot of people ask, well, when we talk about transport uh, pollution or uh, greener transport, should they be talking to Eva Jan, my colleague, Secretary for Transport and Housing, or talking to Edward Yao, the Secretary for uh, Environment? I think the key to that is you shouldn't be bothered by who do you talk to, but try to find a forum that officials of different jurisdictions, different, different disciplines, and also better still, is officials from different cities where we can sit together, share experience, talk about problems that encounter, challenges is ahead so that we can bridge over all those uh, cross-discipline or bureaucratic problems. I think that's what exactly this forum is. So uh, with those uh, observations, I think uh, the seminar or the conference is already half success by having people of different backgrounds coming to here, bring about your passion, bring about your knowledge, uh, your successful experience, as well as worries and problems that you foresee. Because that's exactly what we need uh, in the months, years to come in helping the environment. Now, in Hong Kong, I think the, the message is loud and clear that uh, government is happily uh, committed to clean up our air. And the, act, the acts are difficult because uh, it is not just a city problem, but also a regional one. And also when it comes to uh, interests that might involve different sectors, very often, the devils, in the, this, the devils are in the details. Now, as far as the Hong Kong government is concerned, we have, in fact, uh, made several major commitments in terms of uh, uh, reducing marine emission. I, I, I think Kitty has briefly mentioned it yesterday. The most important thing is you have seen that what government has, in fact, been setting the example, the entire government fleet of marine vessels that government owned and used, and in fact, using ultra low of the diesel. As a demonstration that, well, we are committed to do it very much in the same way as we do land transport. That, as you see, government on the land side is in fact a major user of electric vehicles in Hong Kong, although it's in the very initial stage of technological development. But we do more than that, and in the uh, most recently released policy address, the chief executive has in fact outlined three major areas uh, in charting the Hong Kong strategy for reducing marine emission. The reason is very simple, because, well, for all the things we have been doing over the years, on a matter of relativity, marine emission has, in fact, quietly emerged to be a major emitter. Contrary to people's belief, while people, well, people are still talking about power plants, yes, they are still a major uh, uh, source of emission of SO2, but in fact, marine emissions of SO2, in fact, come to the second place. And in fact, by proportion, because well, for things that we have done in reducing, for instance, the power sector's SO2 emission by 71% in the last four years, on the matter of relativity, marine emission in terms of SO2 has emerged into a second place. And likewise, particulates, the fine particles that is clearly a health hazard, is in fact coming to the first place uh, if we uh, compare marine uh, from other sort of uh, sources. So, yes, uh, while we work hard and continue to work hard, we shouldn't be missing out one very important area, which is the marine sector. Now, encouragement is in fact coming from the trade that last year, the Fairwind Charter, that uh, many of you are involved, in fact, in, in fact has given the, the community a very big boost that, well, the trade is not just keen, passionate, but also ready to act. Now, that's a very important sort of a momentum for any government policy or regulations. Because well, uh, I was talking to some of the uh, uh, guests earlier that, well, uh, on all environmental issues, people usually sort of uh, welcome with open arms, saying, well, it's good for an environment, I'll go for it. But when it comes to the detailed formulation of policy, drafting of law, and when the bills go through the legislative process, very often is the sectoral interest that might come in the way for legitimate reason and sometimes for political reason. Without a wide and deep support from the trade, I think 
uh, there would be more hurdles to overcome. So, in fact, I think we start with a very encouraging sort of a, a situation where the trade has in fact joined hand and also demonstrated their readiness to uh, uh, use in the field uh, when they come sort of into the Hong Kong water. I think that's the very encouraging step. Uh, but followed by the fact that we are, in fact, uh, starting as outlining the policy address, we're starting our conversation uh, with the mainland, particularly in the Pearl with the Delta area, see if we can enter into an eco emission control area, which is a successful example where uh, shared by other more advanced economies in other parts of the world. <coughs> now, we have, in Hong Kong, we have long been having a good uh, collaboration with Guangdong. Uh, over the years uh, on remedial environmental issues, but increasingly in building up a more sustainable and greener area. Together we have a common vision and notion of green PRD, where we want our cluster of cities to be more livable, to be cleaner, to, to be low, lower carbon. So I think that is in fact uh, the platform where we can use to engage the Pearl Delta area, in particular Guangdong province and also Macau. So, we have that platform uh, ready. But more importantly, I think that will also involve the central government because when it comes to ECA, it might involve the central government. So it's a very dynamic, uh, I would say, a pyramid. It's not just a, 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 the Delta area, but also sort of a, from local, provincial to national government. So we will be taking that task onward. Uh, last but not the least, Hong Kong should continue to demonstrate uh, ourselves that, well, as the Green City of Hong Kong, there's no reason why we shouldn't be the greenest port uh, to commensurate with uh, you know, the, the vision of building a green city. So, uh, how to sort of uh, uh, set the example by uh, urging or requiring Hong Kong vessels to adopt a greener field is a challenge ahead. And I believe uh, uh, some earlier work uh, will yield results. Uh, People might not have noticed that in the, in the last uh, two years, we have been funding a pilot project uh, among local vessels to use uh, uh, ultra low uh, uh, sulfur diesel. Uh, technically, we see that, well, that, that could be done because the government has been doing it, and why not uh, all the other local vessels? Now, the aim is very, very simple and clear that we, we want to set the example where the Hong Kong port and the Hong Kong vessels can do it. Now, for all these tasks to move ahead, it comes back to the, the major attributes of a forum like this. It must be cross discipline It must be the collaboration between government, uh, the trade, and the wider community through academia, professional group, uh, and environmental groups. It must be regional, because uh, the question of level playing field will come in. It must be something that we need to engage closely with the trade. Otherwise, uh, the, the worry or the Concern about level playing field, level playing field will come in. So I believe that you have in fact set a very good platform for Hong Kong to launch our sort of cleaner uh, emission from the from the uh, marine sector. And I believe your success will be our success tomorrow. So with the, these remarks, I I would uh, commend uh, Christine and her group and also all the participants for making this early success. And I hope to engage you. Uh, as we chart along all the major policy that we have promised in the policy address. So I wish you a good day and a green Hong Kong. Thank you.